hello, my name is Stuart Russell. I'm an experimental composer, and this is the story of me and the Push 2. How I define myself as being an experimental composer is, to me, experimental means about workflow. What Ableton allows me to do is to try out ideas on the desktop. Because I can set all these different loops going, and I can try having these loops fall over each other and have coincidental harmonies and all sorts of things like that. And because it doesn't really make you think in terms of a beginning, middle or an end, it allows me to start an idea somewhere in that timeline. And if it doesn't work, I can just simply delete it or I can try again and again. So experimental for me means that I start experimenting in the workflow. From that point onwards, once I've got an idea I like, I can then develop it into whatever I think it needs to be developed into. It also really means that I feel free from a particular genre, that I can move in many different directions without having to be forced into any one pigeonhole, musically speaking. And it all started way back in 2008, my first solo gig, and I'd just come across Live 7. And what made this such a big game changer was this was the first time somebody had put together a door that was actually a performance device, whereby not only could it host soft synths for live performance, but also you could start and stop all sorts of loops, both audio and MIDI, that were completely independent of each other, so you could have different length loops and all sorts of things. So this was a real game changer, and this was the first gig in which I used it. Thing was then, there was no controller that I had for Ableton. So all I had was my MIDI music keyboard controller and my laptop. And from an audience point of view, seeing me do this would look very much like somebody doing their tax return or surfing the net whilst occasionally noodling on the keyboard. Um, and this is due to the fact that there was no other means of communicating with the laptop. And I would have to sit there, move the mouse around, find the button to start the clip or stop the clip and then do something else. And it made everything very much like me sitting, looking at behind the laptop all the time. Um, it also made doing the gig very, very slow because in order you couldn't just simply say, right, I want to play that loop there. You'd have to then move the, move the pointer around, find that loop and start it. So it made the gig a very, very slow performance. Okay, fast forward, Ableton Live 8 and the Novation Launchpad came out and this was my first proper controller for Ableton. And it was great. This meant to say that I could take advantage of the launch options on the clips. I can use the toggle, I could use the gate functions and I could do things really quickly. So I could do much faster music and be much more intuitive. And it was great. I had this for a number of years. In 2015, the real game changer was the Ableton Push 2. And the reason this was such a game changer was that you could control all of the Ableton functions from this command control surface, all of the main functions. The problem with this was is the price of this was 600 quid in 2015 and for me that was a lot of money to pay up for something that doesn't make a sound particularly at that time the analog synth market had started up again and i was heavily investing in hardware synthesizers moving away from soft synths so i sort of tried to for years i've tried to work a way around this yeah so instead of having a push to my next option was to buy the Aturia Beatstep Pro. And this had a big advantage that I could do finger drumming from the drum button, but also I then had two other step sequences, which I could then run live into Ableton and then out to any other device. And I used the system for ages and it worked really well. And what I would do is if I wanted to make a MIDI clip, is I would line up the um, 
clip the actual sequence in the uh, BeatStep Pro. I would then record that MIDI into a MIDI clip and then just simply assign that to what I wanted. So I could use a certain amount of pre-production of starting these clips up and then just simply launch them with the launch pad and um, when I wanted to do some live sequencing or some live finger drumming then I would still connect the BeatStep Pro and that worked for quite a while. The only thing with this was is um, it got to a point where it got quite cumbersome and then a particular issue of Ableton came out when these two devices started to not work well with each other. Um, the BeatStep Pro and the original Launchpad started having a few conflicts. So then I would then have to sort of mitigate one against the other. Finally, last year, I got hold of the Novation Launchpad Pro, which did a fair amount of the push functions. You could certainly do the finger drumming. You could create clips with it. And it would also act as a standalone um, sequencer and gave you four channels. And I was quite happy with this. And then, of course, I spilled a pint of beer over it and blew it up. I tried all the usual tricks of washing it out with water and isopropyl. Oh, well, I've got it working again, but it's lost the touchpad sensitivity. So I mulled about buying another one or taking it to an expert cleaner. And it so happens that a deal came up um, through one of the support groups I'm a member of. And um, I bought a, lot, a Push 2 second hand, which hadn't been used, complete with a deck saver, which I thought was appropriate, bear in mind the demise of the previous <laughs> control surface. And I have to say, what's made this particularly useful is I've been able to do so much of my practice now on this one control surface. So the lack of having to use the mouse all the time has certainly saved my shoulder. It's become a lot more comfortable to generally use and, and deal with. I, oddly enough, when I perform in CSMA, uh, my other project is this is completely doorless. So I just simply use the hardware synths. But in my own practice, and when I've been doing live streaming, I still have to use Ableton Live in order to do really what I've got in my mind. So this has actually made life much easier. So after all these years of actually trying to avoid buying one of these and spending that sort of money, in the end of it, uh, I can actually see it, I, the money was actually really justified. <laughs> in actual fact, if I had bought one a few years ago, it would have saved a lot of grief. But now, moving forward, to today is Ableton Live 11 now supports MPE. As a result of supporting MPE, the Push 2 now gives you poly aftertouch, and this is a big step up. The downside to this is with Ableton Live 11 is it's a lot more processor intensive in order to do this, but been having this ability to have individual pressures and slides on each note makes for some really, really interesting effects that I otherwise couldn't do before. So this is the string quartet that I have loaded from Spitfire Audio, and this incidentally comes with Live 11 Suite. So for example, I can do things like this. etc and with certain libraries this can really bring about some new and interesting textures and it makes the sound much more animated than it otherwise would be normally and it makes it sound much less like um, a library 
a, a sample library it can sound much more like a real instrument and there's several you get free with ableton live 11 there is the spitfire audio string quartet which we've just heard there's a brass section and then there's an upright piano all of which are mpe compliant and there's several different mpe options you've got um various different settings you've got um an intimate setting which will make very very subtle differences the glacial setting which we've just used and so forth so in conclusion is if i'd actually spent the money those few years ago the work my workflow would actually have been a lot easier and i would have to have used far less get rounds as for the other tools the beatstep pro is still very much part of my studio um, I use it a lot because it has analog outputs and I use it with my uh, modular system um, which runs off analog and that allows me to control as many parameters I want from the outputs from it and um, similarly to drum outputs from it give you a hit for each individual drum so I can configure that to do lots of different things so that's still pretty much part of my studio. At some point, I will have to get Launchpad Pro properly repaired because I probably will use that with CSMA in the future because the sequences in that are standalone. So, again, I won't need to use a door and I can use that just simply to sequence some of my other gear. So, that's about it.